Hi, we're back with the introduction. Now this is what you should do when you're first getting into the car and getting the car, you know, getting yourself and the car ready for you to drive in a safe fashion, right? Um, this up here is your instrument panel. In the middle is your speedometer. To the right is the gas gauge. To the left is the tachometer. The tachometer also measures speed, but not your road speed. It measures your engine speed. You know, RPMs stand for revolutions per minute. All right, so that's how many times the, the engine goes through its cycles in a minute. All right. Um, it might be hard to tell in the lighting, but after the six, if I go a little closer maybe, after the six, the lines turn from white to red. You know, that's the danger zone, the red line, the no zone, stupid zone, idiot zone, right? Whatever you want to call it, right? You don't want to get the needle up there. If you drive normally and if you take care of the car, it won't happen, right? But you don't want the needle up there because now you know you're damaging the engine. The speedometer tells you how fast you're going. Very important. You know, you have to know how fast you're going. All right? You know, you have to know, am I doing the speed limit or above the speed limit or too slow? Right? They will fail you on the test for driving too slow also. Um, so typically on the test, you want to stay between 20 and 25. For this car, the big lines are 10s and the small lines are 5. So you see the, the even 10s are labeled. All right, so you see 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, etc. are labeled. Um, the odd tens are there, but they're not labeled. All right, so the 10, the 30, the 50, the 70, the 90, etc. They're big lines, but they're not labeled. And then all the skinny lines you see there are fives. All right, so it goes from 0 to 10, then you have 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, etc. All right, so these lines tell you once the needle is at that line, that's how fast you're going, all right? You know, so if you're in a 25 mile an hour zone, you don't want to be doing 40 and you don't want to be doing 15, all right? You have to try to stay within a reasonable speed, of course, based on what's going on around you, all right, you know? If conditions allow, you should you should do right around the speed limit. But the speed limit isn't always safe. You know, if it's snowy, icy, rainy, um, a lot of congestion, a lot of activity, a lot of children, or you know, just people moving around, you know, then you have to use your better judgment and say, okay, for this moment, while I'm dealing with all of this, I need to slow down. But then once you get to the open again, you get back up to the speed limit. And driving too slow causes accidents also. Right? Um, so understand that. Um, we have a mantra that we say seat, mirrors, belt when you first get into the car. You adjust your seat, you adjust your mirrors, um, and then you put on your belt. Right. So for this car, you have a bar underneath. I'm going to try my best to show it without interrupting the video there's a bar that runs underneath the seat here and when you pull this bar right it allows the seat to slide forward and backward all right you have bars on the side maybe not bars um what would you call these levers right so you have two levers on the driver's side here the little one in the back adjust the back part of the seat and the bigger one towards the front adjust the height of the seat to allow you to bring it higher or lower All right so you adjust those so you're comfortable and you should be able to rest your wrist on top of the wheel like this right with your back against the seat that lets you know that you're in a good seating position also you have your pedals right? So you want to be able to comfortably reach the pedals. Right, so you have the gas and the brake. Right? 
gas, brake. All right. So the gas is to the right, the brake is to the left. You want to you want to have your feet where you can reach the pedals comfortably. All right. So that's how you adjust your seat, and then you have your mirror controls here. So here you have your L and your R that selects the left mirror or the right mirror. All right. So if you press the L, that's on the left mirror. Press the R, that's on the right mirror. All right. If it's in the middle, neither mirror will work. This is the off or resting position. Right. And then once you have the mirror that you want selected, then you use the pad underneath with the arrows to move that selected mirror up, down, left, right. right. Um, you want to move the mirrors. Let me see. Um, now for the mirrors to work for most cars, you have to have the electricity running. Right. So here is your ignition over here. Right. So you see the ignition here. All right. It, right now the key is in the lock position um, next to that you'll see ACC you'll see on and you'll see start right you know so the mirrors for most cars not all cars won't work in this position so you're gonna have to turn the key let me see if I hold the phone like this and turn the key to ACC mode, all right? So now it's in ACC mode. Now the mirrors will work. So now I can select the mirror I want, all right? And then I can use the pad. Again, I'll try to hold the camera like this. And you move, right? And then you see the mirror will move. Right now the left mirror is selected. The mirror will move based on what you do with the arrows. Now this is what you wanna see in the mirror, right? You just wanna see just that little piece of your car right there, right? You just want to see the tail end of your car, right? If I want to move the right mirror, now I have to move the switch to R, not just in the middle, all the way, all right? And then move the arrow, all right? And same idea on this side. This is what you want to see. You want to see just You want to see just the tail end of your car, all right? You don't want to see too much of the car, all right? Okay, so that's how you do your um, side mirrors, your side view mirrors, the right and the left mirrors. This is your rear view mirror, all right? So you just want to tilt this up down you do this one by hand for most cars not every car and you just want to see that you want to see the entire rear windshield top bottom and both sides all right you don't you don't want to just see half of the rear view all right you, you want to see the whole rear view in a quick glance of the mirror all right and then of course you put your belt on right and as you see I have mine on now. Alright, so this is seatbelt fasten. Alright. So now this is your parking brake here. Alright. Um, it's not an emergency brake, it's a parking brake. Alright, so you have to understand that you don't use this to stop. You use this to hold the car in place when you park. So um, a lot of times leaving the car, a lot of people just put it in park and leave it like that. But, um, especially if you're on a hill, but even on a flat surface is a good idea to activate it. But especially on a hill, um, you're putting too much stress on the transmission. 
and over time you can mess up your transmission so using the parking brake you know uses the the brakes to squeeze the wheels so that you know the wheels the, the brake and and the wheels are holding the car in place instead of resting all the weight of the car on your transmission all right so you activate this you know when you put the car in park before you release your foot brake a lot of people don't do it like i said but it's a good idea of course now when you're going to drive so if you look up here and if i turn the battery back on all right so when you see all these lights come on like this you know all these lights will come on and go off um, at least most of them um, to let you know that they're working you know once I start the engine all right if I start the engine now the other ones will go off with the exception right now because the car is cold it's been sitting here for a while so for this car that's how the car tells you that it's cold that blue light there so you would have to let the car run until that light goes off if that light turns red that means the car is overheating and that's not good that means you probably need some antifreeze or you know it could be a number of reasons